GeForce For millions of gamers, the very first 3D world they explored was powered by a GeForce card. From its launch in 1999, GeForce reshaped what home gaming looked like. Before it, 3D graphics were clunky and jagged, but the first GeForce cards introduced hardware transform and lighting. Suddenly games didn't just run, they came alive. Over the years, GeForce became the heart of PC gaming, powering titles from Half-Life 2 to Cyberpunk 2077. Gamers relied on it not only for speed, but also for innovation, real-time ray tracing that that makes light bounce realistically, DLSS that uses AI to upscale frames, and driver updates tuned for new releases on launch day. For streamers, esports players, and hobbyists alike, GeForce turned the PC into a canvas for worlds more immersive than anyone thought possible. It was never just a chip, it was the symbol that your machine could keep up with the most demanding digital playgrounds. Today, the GeForce brand is synonymous with gaming itself, a shorthand for graphics power in millions of rigs around the world. Quadro while GeForce was busy entertaining gamers, Quadro was locked inside studios, powering the blueprints of skyscrapers and Hollywood CGI. While GeForce cards lit up gaming screens, Quadro powered the work behind the scenes, architecture models, medical imaging, and industrial design. These cards were certified to run flawlessly with specialized software like AutoCAD, SolidWorks, and Maya, ensuring stability where a crash could cost hours or even days of lost work. What set Quadro apart wasn't flashy speed, but reliability, larger memory buffers for massive 3D datasets, double precision calculations for accuracy, and drivers fine-tuned not for games, but for professional workloads. If GeForce was about fun, Quadro was about trust. Studios relied on them to render blockbuster films. Engineers used them to simulate bridges and skyscrapers before pouring a drop of concrete. Owning a Quadro meant your GPU wasn't just fast, it was validated to keep up with the heaviest, most unforgiving workflows without error. In the professional world, that peace of mind was priceless. Tesla Tesla had nothing to do with cars. This NVIDIA line was about turning GPUs into scientific engines. NVIDIA Tesla is built for high-performance computing, supercomputers, and scientific research. Introduced in 2007, Tesla GPUs were designed not for games, but for raw parallel processing. Universities, laboratories, and enterprises quickly adopted them for tasks that CPUs alone could never handle. Weather modeling, protein folding, deep learning, and astrophysics simulations. The Tesla cards unlocked thousands of CUDA cores for researchers, letting them crunch equations at speeds once reserved for entire server farms. Instead of rendering a video game, they rendered the behavior of galaxies or the dynamics of molecules. They were the silent engines inside top-ranked supercomputers on the TOP500 list. And in many ways, Tesla marked the birth of the GPU as more than just a graphics chip. It was the turning point where NVIDIA GPUs began reshaping artificial intelligence itself, Powering the training of neural networks that led to today's breakthroughs in self-driving cars, speech recognition, and computer vision. Titan Titan is NVIDIA's experimental powerhouse, bridging gaming GPUs and professional-grade computing. It was NVIDIA showing off what an ultimate GPU could look like. When the first Titan launched in 2013, it shocked the PC world. Here was a consumer card that carried DNA from Tesla's high-performance designs, but was sold to gamers and enthusiasts. For the first time, one GPU could handle blockbuster games, GPU-accelerated creative work, and even AI experiments at home. The Titan name carried an aura. It it wasn't just a graphics card, it was a badge of unlimited ambition. You'd find them in the rigs of video editors, 3D artists, and researchers who didn't have access to a supercomputer but wanted more than a G-Force. Titans came with colossal memory pools and computational abilities that pushed boundaries for years. Though eventually phased out, their role was symbolic. They blurred the line between hobbyist and professional, democratizing high-end GPU performance. Titan proved that the most powerful tools shouldn't stay locked in labs or studios. They could belong to anyone bold enough to demand them. Grid what if your graphics card didn't have to sit inside your PC at all? Instead of just having a single fixed one, Grid lets one powerful GPU be split and shared across dozens, or even hundreds, of virtual machines. It was built for businesses, data centers, and cloud providers who wanted to deliver workstation-level graphics to any device, anywhere. A designer in one country could access 3D modeling software hosted on a server thousands of miles away, with no bulky hardware at their desk. Corporations embraced Grid 
method to give remote employees secure access to heavy apps like Katia or Siemens NX. Even gaming companies tested it for cloud-based streaming services. The magic was in NVIDIA's vGPU technology, which carved up GPU resources like slices of a pie, each with guaranteed performance. Grid wasn't flashy, but it quietly rewrote how graphics could be delivered, no longer tied to physical machines, but accessible like electricity flowing from a socket. Jetson a tiny module, the size of your palm, suddenly gave robots eyes and brains. This was Jetson. Launched in 2014, Jetson boards shrank the power of a GPU into something that could fit on a credit card-sized module. Suddenly, developers and researchers could bring computer vision and deep learning into drones, robots, and IoT devices without needing a data center. Universities use them for robotics competitions, startups for AI-powered cameras, and companies for autonomous machines and factories. A Jetson module could recognize objects, process sensor data, and make split-second decisions, all while running on a few watts. It turned NVIDIA's AI revolution portable. For hobbyists, Jetson became the ultimate tinkering kit. You could build a self-driving RC car or a robotic assistant in your garage. For industries, it was the bridge between cloud AI and real-world deployment. By putting intelligence at the edge, Jetson showed that GPUs weren't just about rendering pixels. They could teach machines to to see and act in the physical world. DGX when researchers unboxed a DGX, it felt less like a PC and more like unlocking a vault of raw AI power. When it debuted in 2016, it wasn't just another workstation. It was a powerhouse stacked with multiple GPUs, optimized interconnects, and software tuned to push neural networks to their limits. Universities, labs, and corporations snapped them up because training AI models that once took weeks could now be done in days or hours. The DGX station became a status symbol for research teams. A sleek black box humming away while crunching terabytes of data. Hospitals used it for medical imaging analysis, automakers for self-driving algorithms, and scientists for drug discovery. What made DGX different wasn't only raw speed, but the fact it came preloaded with NVIDIA's AI software stack, CUDA, QDNN, TensorRT, all working seamlessly out of the box. It turned AI from a theoretical pursuit into a practical tool for industries. Owning a DGX was like having a Formula One car for data science. Not everyone needed it, but those who did could lap the competition with ease. Tegra NVIDIA once had the ambition to create Tegra as an all-in-one chip, packing both CPU and GPU power into something small enough for portable devices. It first appeared inside the Zune HD music player, a few early Android tablets, and even the Aoya game console. But none of these really took off, because giants like Qualcomm and ARM already dominated the mobile market. Then came 2017, when Tegra finally found its breakthrough, powering the Nintendo Switch. Inside the console was a custom Tegra Tegra X1, the heart that let the Switch run big titles like Breath of the Wild on a TV, then seamlessly continue in handheld mode. Even if Tegra never conquered smartphones, it found the perfect home in gaming consoles. Beyond that, it showed up in in-car entertainment systems and even early self-driving car experiments. Compact yet powerful, Tegra proved it had a place in shaping new kinds of devices. Done watching? If you like this video, hit subscribe for more cool stuff.